Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about the power of gratitude, how it affects the reticular activating system, the RAS. So first off, we need to get familiar with what the RAS is. If you're a science buff or someone who's interested in the brain and follow some of the podcasts or YouTubes about the brain or even anxiety, you may already be familiar with the RAS. But for everybody out there, I want to get you familiar So the reticular activating system, or RIS as I will be calling it throughout this episode, is a part of the brain that helps regulate our level of consciousness and arousal. It's like a switchboard that filters out unimportant sensory information and alerts the brain to pay attention to the important things. Think of it as a gatekeeper that decides which sensory inputs get sent to the brain for processing and which ones can be let go of or ignored. For example, when you're in a noisy room, the RAS filters out the background noise so you can focus on your conversation. Have you ever noticed when you're highly stressed or anxious, and definitely when you're in panic, it's hard to focus on what you want to pay attention to, the things that are important to you? The RIS is also responsible for keeping us alert and awake. When it senses that we're in danger or in need to pay attention, it sends a signal to the brain to wake up and pay attention. That's why when you hear a loud noise or you feel a sudden jolt or movement, you become more alert and awake. You didn't have to consciously do that. Understanding the RAS got me thinking about how we can see it working in regards to our anxiety. In short, the RAS helps us stay focused and alert filters out distractions so we can pay attention to what's important. So how did we get to where we are with anxiety or chronic stress, thinking about the future over and over again, or things that might happen in life, things that aren't even here and need to be dealt with, things that are sometimes not even possible, rather than the task at hand and the things that are important to us? More on that as we go along, but I thought first it might be interesting to know where the RAS is located. The reticular activating system is located in the brain stem, which is at the lower part of the brain that connects to the spinal cord. Specifically, it is situated in the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata, the brain stem's three major regions. These structures regulate vital functions such as our breathing, our heart rate, and blood pressure, as well as control consciousness and arousal through the RAS. The RAS is composed of a complex network of neurons that span these different regions of the brainstem, allowing it to receive and to be able to process information from different sensory systems and modulate the overall level of the brain's activity. So that's where it is and that's what it's doing. And believe me, I am no neuroscientist. I am not going any deeper with this. I just want you to understand these little bits of pieces of our brain are all working together. And when one thing changes, other things change too. So this is important for us to understand. And now let's get on to the anxiety piece of this. Anxiety really can have direct and indirect effects on the brain's reticular activating system. First, anxiety can directly stimulate the RAS and increase its activity level, which can lead to an increase 
in alertness and arousal. This can result in symptoms such as hypervigilance, restlessness, and difficulty sleeping. I hope you guys are hearing this. You may be able to start seeing where this may be coming up in you. Secondly, anxiety can indirectly affect the RAS by increasing the activity of other brain regions that modulate its function, such as our good old friend the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. These areas are involved in processing emotional information and regulating cognitive processes such as attention, decision-making, and so forth. When they become overactive due to anxiety, they can interfere with the normal functioning of the RAS, leading to disruptions in sleep, attention, and overall level of arousal. And lastly, chronic anxiety can also lead to changes in the structure and connectivity of the brain, including the RAS. These changes can result in long-term alterations in the way the RAS responds to sensory input. And this can lead to persistent symptoms such as chronic fatigue, brain fog, and difficulty concentrating. Again, I'm hoping that you are being able to see how all of this is going together with our amygdala, with our stress levels. So overall, anxiety can have complex and varied effects on the RAS and the brain as a whole. And understanding these effects is important in developing effective treatments and effective lifestyle changes that you can make for your anxiety-related disorders. So the RAS changes can actually also cause anxiety. The RAS plays a crucial role role in regulating our level of arousal and attention, and disruptions in function can lead to various mental health problems, including anxiety disorders. So research suggests that hyperactivity in the RAS can lead to increased levels of anxiety and hypervigilance. In contrast, hypoactivity in the RAS can lead to decreased arousal and difficulties with attention and being able to focus. Various factors, including genetic predisposition, chronic stress, traumatic experiences, substance abuse, and so on, can cause these imbalances in the RAS. Additionally, changes in other brain regions that modulate the function of the RAS, such as the amygdala and prefrontal cortex, can also contribute to the development of anxiety disorders. These regions are involved in processing emotional information and regulating cognitive processes, such as attention and decision-making. Disruptions in their function can lead to overactive or underactive responses in the RAS. Overall, the RAS is a complex system that interacts with the various other brain regions to regulate our level of arousal and attention and changes in its function can have significant effects on our mental health, including the development, like I said earlier, of anxiety disorders. Understanding the role of the RAS and anxiety can help inform effective treatments and interventions so that we can actually make some lifestyle changes and find ourselves getting better every day. This is a good reminder of why holistic health and healing are so important. Holistic health treats the entire body, mind, and spirit as one in order to address the underlying causes of disease and enhance overall wellness. Because what we think and what we feel are also a part of our overall health and wellness, not just the physical, it's also why things like gratitude, positive thinking really do matter. I have talked about gratitude, journaling, prayer, and affirmations, and I think you can see how these are making the changes that the wise ones long before knew could make a difference for a beautiful and peaceful, successful life. 
So let's look at how gratitude in particular works with the reticular activating system. Gratitude can positively affect the RAS by changing how we perceive and filter information in our environment. You know, I have said for years and years here that if you keep a gratitude journal, you are training your brain to be looking for more of the same in your life because you are going to be having to come up with more every day, every day. This was a part of this training. Gratitude is a positive emotion that can help us focus on the positive aspects of our lives and increase our awareness of the good things around us. When we practice gratitude, we focus on positive experiences and emotions, which can help retrain the RAS to filter in more positive stimuli. That's what we're looking for. Bring in the good. Research has shown that practicing gratitude can increase the activity in the prefrontal cortex, a region of the brain involved in regulating attention and emotion, and decrease the activity in the amygdala. You all know what that amygdala is. It is involved in processing negative emotions such as fear and anxiety. These changes in the brain activity can help regulate the activity level of the RAS and promote a more positive outlook on life. Practicing gratitude can also help reduce stress, which is a significant factor in the hyperactivity of the RAS. We really want to be able to be more calm and peaceful in order to let the RAS also calm down, not just our amygdala. By focusing on the positive aspects of our lives, we can reduce the impact of stress and negative emotions on the RAS, leading to better overall mental health and well-being. So in summary, Practicing gratitude can help retrain the RAS to filter in more positive stimuli and regulate the brain's activity level. And so we want to be focusing on the positive aspects of our lives, and we can reduce the impact of the stresses and the negative emotions leading to better overall mental health. So I have some ideas for you on how you might go about this. First of all, many of the shows that I've done in the past are definitely in line with this. Why? Because we were trying to do it for the amygdala, and it is all tied in together. We don't have just little separate boxes, parts of our brain, or little separate boxes, parts of our body. All our systems are relying on all our other systems, and all the parts of our brain are affected by all the other parts of our brain. And so we are going to be paying attention now because we may also have an overstimulated RAS along with a hyperactive amygdala would make total sense. But what will help one will help the other, which is a lot of the things that we've been talking about here on the show. You know, I have many, many other episodes on gratitude. I would get in deep on those if you haven't listened to them yet. It's time to bring this up into your life and really filter in more positive stimuli. I love that. Let the RAS be letting in more positive stimuli and reducing the negative aspects that aren't necessary. Obviously, important things are going to get through, but we don't need to be worrying about these fantasy things in our head that are not quite happening. It's okay to visit there, but you don't want to be ruminating on such things. That isn't what we need to be spending our life energy on. It's only cranking up our RAS and our amygdala and keeping us in that fight or flight mode. So here's some things you can do. 
you can set goals. This is a good thing to do because this gives your RAS a target, something to focus on, and it will filter out distractions and irrelevant information that doesn't help you get to your goal. Another thing you can do is to use visualization. Now, I know some of you are saying, oh, I don't do good with that visualization. I can't do that. But I am sure you can, because I bet you can visualize a lot of negative things. And I bet you can see a lot of things that you don't want to go on happening in your visualization. The point is that you want to use this visualization as a tool to focus on the things you want. Again, go back to those goals. Next thing you can do is to start to pay more attention to your surroundings. By paying attention to what's around you, you can help your RAS filter out distractions and focus on the things that are relevant to you in the here and now. This can help you stay alert and focused and improve your overall well-being. And finally, you can practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is that technique that we use to focus our attention on the present moment as if it mattered because it does matter. With practice, we can develop better control over our attention and our focus. We'll get better at this and we can achieve greater happiness, peace, and calm. I hope this show was helpful for you. Like I said, I am not a neuroscientist. That is not my world at all. I am just using layman's terms to try to get into how the brain is working all the different pieces together and affecting us and how not just our physical being is is working on our brain, but our thoughts, our emotions, we need to remember this, the spiritual aspects of us, all of this affects our brain and our chemistry. And it's really wonderful that we have parts of us that are trying to keep us going in the right direction for peace, calm, and safety. And now for today's quote. Gratitude is the closest thing to beauty manifested in an emotion. And that's from Mindy Kaling. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.